Welcome to Does This Design Work? In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Fate spin-off game, Fate Extra. Fate Extra is a PSP game set in an alternate timeline where in the year 2030, a new Holy Grail War is being held in a virtual world on the moon. 128 masters each summon a servant and compete in a tournament to have their wish granted. Fate Extra is notable in that most of the character designs were not done by Takashi Takauchi, but instead new artist Arko Wada. Also, in order to ease fans of the previous Fate entries into a different world, in addition to the entirely new characters, several are either alternate versions of characters from previous entries, or are visually similar but different individuals, all with some notable difference that sets them apart from their previous counterparts. Before we begin, we should state that any comments made unless stated otherwise are merely our own opinions since art and design can be subjective. Also, there will be heavy spoilers for Fate Extra all the way to the end of the game. We will also only be talking about characters from Extra and not its sequels CCC and Extella. With that said, let's begin. Let's take a look at our first design. Okay. <laughs> oh. Let's start off on the highest note we possibly can. One of the most controversial fucking designs ever. Fucking Red Saber. Now this design to me is fucking hilarious. Now, Saber's character is that she's really haughty and prideful, so she's all like, look at me, I'm showing all of it off and all that. Oh crap, how did I go back? Oh wait, how did I go back? Forgot how to do this, okay. <laughs> but yeah, this... <laughs> so... So, so this, so I'm, uh, this, so we, I'm, uh, in the intro we mentioned that a lot of characters are similar in order to ease fans. So, so I'm, uh, this character is... Yeah, this character is clearly Saber. Have you ever seen what Saber looks like? But red. Yeah. And with bigger chest. Uh huh, and with bigger chest. <laughs> and more fan service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So this servant is, uh, is Nero Claudius Augustus Germanicus, if that's the full name. I forget if it is. I might be missing one. One of the emperors of Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now if you're familiar with the Fate series, then it may not be as any surprise to you that. This uh, male figure, Nero Claudius, is a girl this time. Lucas, what's the justification for this one? I don't fucking know. Um, it's she's a they just lied about it in history. That's what it is. Okay. I like I think like a lot of people like in the subreddits in the Fate subreddits always point out that you know what, you know what I'm uh, even though there was a lot of ladies in history, sexism was still a thing, and so when people write the books and and catalog the events, they just write them as men because they can't stand it being a girl. I still think this is one of the laziest excuses in the series. Now, now there's some good aspects to this design, question mark. I like the shoulder pads here. You can tell that she's Roman based off of those. How do I go back? Um, and I like the boots, and you can see the entire boots because her dress is a weird, stupid see-through dress. Well, outfit aside, like, she has different eye colors, so that you can also tell that way it's not King Arthur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get- well, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. In Fate Extra, like, she doesn't tell you her identity for her own reasons, and, like, people may assume that she's Arthur just based on the face. That saber face that we all know. Which apparently is justified with, uh... Uh, she's, I guess, a descendant of Nero. Like, Distantly. So, uh, yeah, so there's also, like, you know, the ass crack here, which is, like, just <laughs> adds to this design's absurdity. It's it's even more absurd when I learn that that isn't, like, her underwear. That's a that's a leotard. Yeah. Like, like there's, they have a, in the anime, they have a scene where she takes, like, the dress part off and you just see the leotard. And it just looks like the most impractical piece of clothing ever to ever exist. I think my favorite part of this design is probably just the head. I like the way the hair is done in the bow. I think that's kind of cool. It's kind of, it's somewhat distinct from how um, uh, Artoria does it. Is it though? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, just where, just having the bow there makes it distinct, you know? I would say more the eyes, but yeah. Well, yeah, 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 do it your own. Um, so if there's anything we can talk about with this design, is that um, uh, this is very, since we have Takeuchi's Artoria to compare it to, um, like, 
I guess like I guess what I'm like we can tell there's a we can tell the differences between um, Arko Wada's art style and Takeuchi's art style from just comparing uh, this face right here to Arturia's face. Yeah, like like I think we discussed it earlier. Like Arko, Arko Wada goes for brighter colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell right away from just her outfit. The eyes are big. The eyes are bigger with uh, Arko Wada's art style, and yeah, like you said earlier, the colors are um uh, are much brighter, and we're gonna see that across um uh. Um, uh, the next few designs, the rest of the designs we look at for today. That being said, what's our final verdict on this design? Eh. <laughs> In a vacuum, I guess it's passable, but ridiculous, but the the fact that she was just designed this way to get people to buy extra to make them think Saber was in it kind of loses points. Like, I just... <laughs> I can understand the idea of, uh, like, I, I don't mind the uh, the character trait of, I don't give a fuck, so I'm showing it off. But just the way it looks is just, the way it's done just looks hilarious to me. It's really difficult to describe. I just don't like Nero at all. Maybe it's just because I didn't play extra, and I've only seen her in the bad stuff, like Septum from Grand Order, and I've seen the Excella stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, last encore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Nero just doesn't appeal to me at all. Fate Extra is the only piece of Fate Media where she's cool. But so her... she peaked really early. Yep. And it's all downhill from there. It's all downhill from there. But if there's anything that's remained consistent is that her design is hilarious and dumb. Alright, so something that we have neglected to mention is that um, uh, the first three designs on this list, ending with uh, the design of Caster Tamamo here, are all the three playable servants that you can be the master of when you're uh, playing Fate Extra. So yeah, this is the third option you have. Uh, Tamamo no Mai, is it? Tamamo no, yeah, Mai. I think, yeah, it is like Mai, like the way you would pronounce that. Um, yeah, so she is a waifu cute fox girl, and she wears a kimono. And she has bows and ears. I feel like her entire design is just meant to be a, just a sexy, cute waifu girl. Yeah, I can see that. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, it's mentioned on the wiki that, um, uh, Nasu is all like, I wanted a cute character with fox ears to appeal to male gamers. <laughs> like, like, you know, so we got, like, Nero, who was designed to get, you know, to ease fake people into this world. And then we have, like... Tamamo, whose design has stated that I want this to appeal to, to male to the male players who are playing it. So it feels like, like I guess I guess like it feels like with with pretty much all three of the main player character designs, they're all trying to really just like their job is just to draw in players. Yeah, Nameless is get to get the women crowd in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And both Nero and Nameless are get to get former Fate fans in, and Tamamo is to get the um. Uh, <laughs> Is to get all the waifu obsessed furry people in. <laughs> so yeah, this is a nice, uh, consistent color scheme of like just the blue and the with the white trimmings and a little bit of gold. I'm pretty sure every single like, even just to the colors, I'm pretty sure every single aspect of her design was was is just designed to be like cutesy and all that. Like it's so like not only does she have fox ears, but she has twin tails, and she has a and she has fucking two bows. She has a fluffy tail. Uh, speaking of tail, like if you'll notice, like those uh, what are those back flaps, uh, ribbons? Uh, I guess it would be. I think it's it's uh, it's uh they're attached to like this thing. I forget what it's called. I think it might be called an obi. But yeah, I think they're it's they're like the they like come off of the their waist thing that keeps her dressed together. Yeah, something that got pointed out to me, like, in another thread was, if you look on the sash, like, you can see, like, uh, drawings of, like, eight different tails. Oh, I never, oh, wow, that's actually really interesting. That's yeah, because nice uh, she's connected to the nine-tailed demon fox of Japanese mythology. So that's just to show, yeah, she's got nine tails. Okay, okay. Although this is just one-tailed form. Yeah, 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 because she, like, she's revealed to be, like, one part, like, Amaterasu split into nine. Like, she's one of the nine tails that split off from the god Des Amaterasu. 
Uh, I'm, I think so. She's, oh, yeah. a, oh, she's no, an no, aspect of a, a Matatarasu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, there's, like, the thing where it's, like, if all nine Tamamos fuse together, they'll, it'll just be Amaterasu again. Hmm. And there's, like, some... I think Takuchi has some, like, art for, like, what that would look like and all that. It's pretty interesting. But, yeah, that's a really cool part of her design. Never noticed it. But, um, uh, what are our overall thoughts on this design? Uh, it's good. It does what it wants to, to, like, get you to see her as a cute wife, which is what she wants you to think of her as, too. Yeah. I gotta say, like, my, I, I agree with you completely, although I gotta say, now that I know about the whole tail thing, I'm like, her design is just, you know, a bit more interesting. And, you know, it helps that I also find fox ears and tails cute on things. So I'm a little biased in that respect. I do think it's a much better design than Nero. Yeah. Simply because it's not a copy-paste with some edits. Okay, so honest question, does Shinji look like more of an asshole? in uh, this design, or does the Takeuchi one look, like, more assholey? Well, when you brought the picture, I thought, like, wow, Shinji actually looks cooler than the original version. He lo I just noticed, like, his hair is not as, like, it doesn't have that evil squiggle that it does, or that curliness that it does. Yeah, in, uh, it's, it's still a little, like, uh, messy, but kinda better? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um... There's, like, mid, like, maybe with this, there's a bit of, like, unkemptness in there that you can kind of look at, but I don't know, that might be just an interpretation of his hair. Um, also, since we aren't looking at Hakuno and Lady Hakuno, um, uh, this is the first, um, uh, we're gonna get a look at the, uh, the uniforms for the, uh, school that they go to in, in the moon world. Yeah, because even now, fate can't get away from a high school setting. Well, to be fair, it's used really well in, like, the intro of the game to make you think that you're just going to the school in, uh, uh, Shiro's in the real world. Okay. But yeah, then it turns out the school's just used as, like, just a place where everyone stays and, you know, just where everything- where all- where all the tournament shit's organized. But, yeah, um, uh, I mean, he still looks like- I mean, really, this design is only really interesting to me just because, hey, Shinji looks a little different, you know? Yeah. But other than that, I don't really have much to say beyond that. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Alright, so this is Francis Drake. Yep, that's... That's, <laughs> that's the, Francis Drake. That's, oh, there she is. That's Captain Francis Drake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, um, uh... So, uh, gender-bended servant number 40 billion. Number two in this video, I guess. Um, so... So, um, I'm actually really, uh, totally for the explanation of how sh of why Francis Drake is a woman in this scenario. Which one? Because there's two. Oh, well, I'm talking about the one where I'm, uh, specifically, like, I'm, uh, so Queen Elizabeth- so Francis Drake was a person, but then he swapped places with Queen Elizabeth I, because Queen Elizabeth couldn't show her face in public anymore because of a scar she got. The scar right here. So, yeah, I'm totally... So, the idea that she's Queen Elizabeth I is, uh, is a really interesting idea, actually. Okay, because the other one was she's just so manly that her crew didn't want to see her as a woman because they'd feel inadequate. Well, so how does that, like, get into her being summoned, like... So, okay, so I... Okay, actually, never mind. So that's just, like, her crew lying about her being a man because they can't see her as such. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, now, I remember when I first looked at design, I was really off-put by this little aspect right here. It seemed a little extreme. But other than that, I think her design, her outfit's like, uh, her outfit's really cool. She's a pirate. Yeah, she definitely gives off that impression. I like that her hair looks, you know, just a tiny bit unkempt and all that. And, um, and yeah, that looks like an outfit a pirate would wear. Yeah, it looks like... Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the design too, like... Did Francis Drake have a scar? Is he known for that? Or is this uh, like... I don't remember if he did. I know he had a lot of injuries uh, up until his death. Okay. Well, I guess if I could say some more, other than the scar being a cool way of like... Of being like worked into the explanation of why she's a girl, I think it just kind of... It makes, her, it makes her just look a bit more like a pirate, you know? It makes her look a bit more badass and suitable for being a pirate. Yeah. Which, you know, a design for, like, I guess a hot lady character is, risk, is at risk of not being, you know? 
I can comment on this a bit more. <laughs> I think that's flat out just supposed to replicate just the design that I think a lot of pirates go through where they wear these vests that show off their chests, you know, their manly pirate chests. But just because she's a woman, she just has cleavage instead. And this yeah, all <laughs> That seems like the most likely explanation other than just fan service. Yeah, 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 I was going to say, other than, like, we want to do some, we want to show some boobs and all that. Oh, Lucas. What? She has high heels. Eh, it's, eh, I guess. <laughs> Her design is ruined. No, it's great, it's good. Okay, so who's this servant? This is not a servant. Now, this is the design that came to my head immediately when, when we were talking about the high school setting. The fact that this is the least high school thing of all time? Either that or Lil Ronnie. Oh yeah, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Dan Blackmore, who is the master of Archer that is not nameless. Um... It's a very interesting design. Uh, the most thing, this thing that stands out the most is that this collar being a weird, like, he has like a weird cross belt thing. I thought that was a tie belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I think more so with uh, Shinji, we can somewhat, uh, we can start to get into like um, uh, a concept that we had talked about in our first episode, and that is like master designs kind of coalescing with their servant designs. And so when uh, Dan Blackmore does that, he has like uh, uh, like he has this vest here, which uh, our, his servant kind of has too, and he also has green. But other than that, um, uh, I think in direct comparison to Robin Hood, um, uh, he definitely looks a bit more noble than him. Yeah, like Dan Blackmore is supposed to is like supposed to be a knight of sorts, and that's kind of what he looks like, just like a like I guess kind of a modern. I, I'm hesitant to say modern day, because... <laughs> Alternate timeline in the future. Alternate timeline in the future version of kind of what a knight looks like. Because it's weird, because Dan Blackmore, he's not like a guy who punches or like... Like, he, he's a sniper. That's what he is. A sniper that fights fair. In the Holy Grail War, at least. So it's kind of weird. Like, his design really kind of clashes with what he is, I guess. I mean, he is, like, under a guy who is, like, is a king, so that's kind of, you know, that's consistent with, it's consistent with that, on that level. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, like, like, I, I should say, like, I don't really, like, I think this design, like, looks good, it's really interesting to look at, but it's really weird to kind of place it as to what it is. Yeah. What is that thing on his forehead, though? Is that like a scar or something? Um, it looks or is that like just, just shading? It might be just shading. Yeah. All right. I do like that he has like the coat of arms on his shoulders. Oh and yeah. And all that. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't notice that. That's cool. What are your overall thoughts on this design? It's a good design. I just, it's kind of weird when once you get past the high school setting and then you have designs like this, or little Ronnie. Okay. Or, or Lou Boo's master. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's a here's a funny thing about Dan Blackmore, is that you know you fight Shinji first, and he's another school guy, and he's been built up before the Holy Grail even begins. And then like you go to like the board to figure out who you're going up against in the tournament, and it's like, oh, it's a guy named Dan Blackmore. He's standing right next to you, and he's like this old guy wearing armor, and he goes, "You suck," and he walks away. <laughs> Why? Just, because he's all like, you don't have the experience necessary to beat me. You can tell I'm filled with experience because of how old I am and all that. So, yeah. <laughs> now, this is uh, Robin Hood, whom we've mentioned earlier. Um, his design is pretty cool. I really like that he has this green cape and green armor to kind of make him look like a ranger, you know? Yeah, like, you could definitely tell this is Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, the, the green color scheme, the fact that he's an archer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if he was given the orange hair because, you know, Robin Hood in the Disney film was an orange fox. Nah, probably just, like, to, like, just to stand out. Yeah, I guess. Maybe just to, you know, clash with the colors on here and all that. Um, so some design element we're gonna see on a lot of the extra characters is that a lot of characters have clothes that are, like, just parts of their design that just kind of transition into another color like this. 
Hmm. Is that just part of the art style? Yeah, I think so. But I've always wondered if, like, maybe the, that the reason it was like that was just to, like, give the idea that they're kind of being projected because they're in a computer world or something like that. Yeah, that could be. Or it could be that that's his no-face-making cloak that makes him invisible. Yeah, 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 although you don't see it on his backside at all. Um... So something I, uh, that was kind of pointed out to me is that if he just lets this kind of cloak just hang without his arms pushing it up, he just kind of looks like a... He'll just look like a normal peasant. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when he busts out, it turns out, oh, he has armor, he's got some stuff that looks like it's meant for holding gear. He's actually a le he kind of a lethal, dangerous dude. And he has a, like, arm-mounted crossbow. Yeah, 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 which is not depicted here, but it looks super sick. <laughs> I always find it weird that, like, this, this, um, uh, like, even though he can't see here, he doesn't get, like, a bow and arrow, he gets a crossbow. Like, I always wondered why, like, that was the decision. Well, there, according to the lore of Fate, there's multiple Robin Hoods. Oh, yeah, 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 he's just one of them, so. Yeah, so this is probably the chivalrous thief who, like, sets traps in Sherwood Forest. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the other ones who, like, won the archery tournament... Uh, or it's probably another Robin Hood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, um, I guess overall thoughts? It's a really good design that, like, just shows, like, the archer archetype. And just shows that he's not really a noble guy, because he'll use dirty tactics to win. I don't know, his rough appearance just kind of shows that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially, like, the fact that they cover up one of his eyes. You know, you might be hiding, like, a sharring gun under there. We, we don't know. You don't like that? You're giving me a face that says you don't like that I said that. <laughs> anyway, it's a good design. Uh, let's move on to our next design. Alright, so this is a weirder servant-master um, combination. So much so that I had to put them on the same slide here. So, I guess let's first talk about uh, the servant. Uh, this is uh, Nursery Rhyme. Nursery Rhyme? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what figure is that? Nursery Rhyme is a representation of, like, all the stories that her master Alice um, read when she was a kid. And so thus her powers um, uh, are pretty much like doing stuff like from Alice in Wonderland. Like, sh she can summon a Jabberwock as like a Berserker Servant. That's one of the things she can do. And she also has, like, a maze of, like... Oh, man, I forgot what it was called. But the maze that, um, uh... Nameless Maze, I think it's called. Where you're trapped in a maze and you forget your name. Okay. I forget if that's, like, an Alice in Wonderland thing. <laughs> or... Or not. But, yeah, um, because Nursery Rhyme... Like, the stories themselves don't have, like, a person that kind of tie them all together. So, thus, Nursery Rhyme takes on the appearance of her master in order so that she can play with her. Otherwise, she's literally just a floating book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess, like, so something I kind of read from, uh, um, uh, the black and whiteness is that, like, Nursery Rhyme, or, um, uh, Alice is, like, a person who is dead in the real world. She's just, like, a kind of cyber ghost that's floating around who happened to get a servant. So that's kind of what I read the whole color contrast as between these two characters. So Alice is, like, white to show she's a ghost, and Nursery Rhyme is, uh, dressed in black to... J just contrast that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just mean, like, because black and white kind of both represent death when you put them together. And black by itself represents death, so it could... You could say that it represents the inevitability of, uh, Alice's fate here. There's also the fact that um, uh, Alice's um, or, um, uh, nursery rhymes dress is more smooth, whereas um, uh, this is more frilly. Um, I don't know what to make of that, but it's pretty interesting. Maybe to show that she's the artificial one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does make sense. Um, I remember thinking earlier that maybe um, uh, Alice's design could be like maybe it's trying to represent like a hospital gown or something, but I'm not so sure about that. Nah, it's probably just like a dress for a little girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, one thing I've noticed is that both of them have, like, creepy doll joints. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, let me, uh, let me, uh, take a... So, like, I think, like, right... Wow, 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 I never noticed that. 
Huh, wow, that's like super cool. It, it's more cool. noticeable on the arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, that's actually really interesting. Like, one thing is that, um, uh, like, you can't, like, one of the mysteries in Fate Extra is that no one can tell who's the master. At some point, Hakuno goes, is there, are there just two masters and Jabberwock is the servant? Okay. And the fact that they both have those joints, it definitely gives off the, uh, feeling that, like, Alice is no longer human or of this world. And same thing with her servant, because she's copying her appearance. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting design. Oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, uh... I mean, I mean, Alice's episode was the one of the better ones in Last Encore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Last Encore was so bad. Last Encore was awful. Okay, so once you uh, kill three servants in Fate Extra, you get to make a moral choice, and that determines what master you fight in the fourth and sixth rounds. Uh, Manji Gato is one of those masters. Although, let me just say that ahead of time, his servant happens to be Arquade from the Tsukihime series. And until we do, like, a Tsukihime video, I don't think we're actually going to look at Arquade's design. So for now, we're just going to look at the master. And this is Manji Gato. He's, uh... He's kind of a crazy dude, and um, uh, you don't really get that impression when you first look at him, though. Uh, I don't know. He's got the dyed hair, like the unzipped coat. I don't know. It kind of looks like a biker. Yeah, a little bit. Although he's not like. So his thing is that he's creating. His... He's like creating a new religion based off his servant Arquade. And it's like, he's like mixing a bunch of shit from a bunch of other religions, which is why he has like the Star of David, he has all this jewelry, he has the cross here. Is he a traveler? Because I can get that vibe from like the hat he has. Yeah, I think so. The problem with Manji Gato is that he's such an underdeveloped character <laughs> in the game itself. I think he gets more development in Fate Extra CCC that might flush him out more, but for now he's just kind of a crazy religious zealot. So, I mean, if anything, the design is interesting to look at. And I love the details that he has all this paraphernalia. It definitely makes his... Because I, I, I initially thought that he looked like a pretty normal guy, just with kind of weirdo hair. But um, uh, I, I think the, the jewelry and stuff kind of made it... I guess it made it more consistent with what I know about his character, and that made it cool. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I think compared to pretty much every other master up until this point, I think a uh, Little Rani or Runru, depending on what website you're reading her name from, um, uh, she has a lot going on with her design. She's a clown lady? Yeah, so she's like... So apparently she's dressed this way based off, like, a real-life fast food mascot. It might be some, like, Japanese Ronald McDonald or something. Um, and she's really crazy, and she wa and she's like a cannibal too. She wants to eat people. Okay. Um, although funnily enough, like she looks like really um, uh, she's supposed to look really like malnourished, like she's really like fucking skinny compared to pretty much every other design. Yeah, I can get that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't help that she has like those like long sleeves that just accentuate like how, like, skinny her frame is. Yeah, yeah, and I really like that they do that. Um, also, um, uh, this is not her face, it's a mask, and I never got that until I read up some stuff about her design. And apparently she has a really normal girl face under there. She also has, like, a... How do I, uh, how do I say this without saying the other word? Uh, a hoge. A hoge, okay. <laughs> Don't mix them up, Lucas. Because I, 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 that's all I could think of when I was looking at that hair design. Um, yeah. So, if anything, this design is like, wow, look at this girl. Can you tell she's crazy? Uh, no, not quite. I think she needs a, some blood on her. Then we'll know she's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, oh man. Like, even from, like, even for, like, fate designs, like, she stands out so much. Yeah, because fate designs are, like, like, nightly, or, like, uh, in suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just a demented clown. I mean, it, it also helps with the asymmetry with, like, the different colors on her sleeves. Like, the fact that her stockings are, like, change color, but that might just be the Arcawato 
art style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with, with, with like like with what happened with uh, Robin Hood's cape and all that. Um, it's interesting to look at just because of how weird it is. But you know, I'm pretty. Uh, but you know, this design is okay, I guess overall. Yeah. I remember not thinking much of it when I initially played the game. So um, uh, this is this is uh, Ronnie's uh, servant, uh, Dracula, uh, Vlad the Third. But we already looked at Vlad the Third. Nope, this is the one that's totally okay with being nuts, but also doesn't have the vampire abilities. So, the the Vlad in Apocrypha is the i is the idea of the King Vlad, ruler of Romania, with yeah, yeah, some yeah. Dracula influences. This is the warrior Vlad, who happily impales enemies and causes slaughter. What the fuck is this right here? Those look like beast claws. Is that just to hold his cape together? Um, yeah, I guess it's just to hold his cape together. It's a really interesting, like, was Vlad a hunter? No, no, he was always a noble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, um, Vlad was originally gonna have a full cape in his design, but the PSP can't handle capes. <laughs> so they just, like, made it torn off? Yeah, 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 and then you don't have to, like, add much animation or anything to it. Um, I gotta say, it's really on the nose to have him be, like, black and red as his colors, and to also have spikes. It, it looks like his armor is, like, uh, stained with blood, like he recently killed someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird how it's just his left side, though. I guess that's maybe just so we can have, like, both colors without him being completely red. Man, I completely forget what his weapon looked like. I think it was just, like, a spear. But, uh... I mean, if did he use it to try to impale you? Yeah, I, th I think so. See, the thing about playing Fade Extra is that you're never paying attention to the animations. You're just paying attention to, like, the words on scre screen that said you picked the right attack. And then you just kind of... And the only animations you pay attention to are the Noble Phantasm animations, because they're so long. So, since this Vlad it doesn't have the Dracula traits, or at least not as prominently, he looks a lot more, like, normal human than Apocrypha Vlad. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. was much paler. Yeah, yeah, he's less pale for sure. Um, I find it weird that he looks so old also, considering this is, like, before he was king? Unless general was something that happened after being uh, king of Romania. Well, you can combine king and warrior together, because he could be king and still defend it from the Turks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if anything, it's a very interesting... It's a lot more... It's a, it's it's really interesting as a more unhinged version of the design we looked at in Apocrypha. Yeah, like the... Um, just the ferocious warrior who was a scourge to his enemies. Yeah. Now that I think about it, these spikes are really weird and out of place. <laughs> like, they aren't on the front of his knees, which is where I would have expected them to be. Like, I feel like they were just added there just because, hey, look, I bet you could impale something on that. Also, he has a spike coming off the back of his heel. Yeah, 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 weird. I guess, like, again, just the same reason of these spikes. Same reason that these spikes exist. Just to impale people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was looking at this design the other day, and um, uh, there's a lot of silly aspects to it. The fact that he has this cool fur coat, but until then they get to this part. Yeah, the collar's just like super high. It's way too big. It was built for a giraffe. But I think something that's really interesting about this design is, uh, first of all, most of it's black. His hair is black. His eyes are black. His clothes are mostly black. Like it's clear that he's supposed to be seen as like a bringer of death, sort of. You know. Yes. That's kind of what black represents. But I really like the way it kind of goes into blue here, and it look, almost looks like space. But, like, I guess, like, what I think it is is that his design is meant to be fairly simplistic and that he's a bringer of death, but since he's in a computer, this also kind of happens to him. He's a bringer of death inside a Tron world. Yeah, so is that binary code um, on his coat? binary code. Oh, okay. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's just like a, some kind of pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, it's a really interesting. It makes the design interesting to look at. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty, I mean, unless you have anything else to say, I think it's a pretty straightforward design. I mean, it, it's really interesting like how it transitions from the black to blue with, like, uh, 
black as a secondary color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a... it's a good design, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so, if you ignore the high collar. Yeah, okay, yeah, that is still, like, a really goofy part of its design. I guess the goofy thing is that there doesn't seem to be, like, a zipper here or anything, by the way. I mean, I guess you could just say we can't see it because we're looking at it from too far away, and that's how it was drawn. But it's like... Man, like, even, even his gloves have, like, that pattern on them. Well, so he can punch people real hard. <laughs> Man, this character was wasted in Last Encore. I know nothing about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just like a dead face in Last Encore. And then he just went, you suck Hakuno a lot. Like, I, I would not have known he's the brother of that other guy that we're gonna see. Oh, yeah, because that's like a twist later on, because his name is Julius B. Harway, but like, before we learn that, we just call he just calls himself Kazuki, based off that character, because he's, you know, an assassin that punches people to death. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, we were supposed to think he was an alternate Kazuki? Yeah, 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 until we learn, um, uh, yeah, until we learn his actual name. Um, this is Lee Shuen, the servant of Julius B. Harway. Um, his design, um, uh, you can tell a couple things right away. You can probably tell from the clothing that he is a Chinese servant. And a martial artist. Yep, based on the way, like, his, well, yeah, he's cracking his knuckles. That's just that pose. He's gonna punch you. So, he's, a uh, uh... A Chinese martial artist of Bajiquan? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, he's very interesting as far as assassin designs go, because he looks like he's gonna confront you head-on. Which he surprisingly doesn't until, like, a later, a way later point in, like, his, uh, section of the story. Yeah, you said he, he just hides until he attacks you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no way to know when he'll attack you? He has, like, EX presence concealment or something like that. Um, so something about so something about his character is that he's a guy who seeks strength. He's you know one of those characters, and so it's very appropriate that his hair and clothes kind of match his fiery spirit. You know, so he constantly um, challenges strong opponents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though he's an assassin, which is kind of weird. Well, the the concept of assassin in Fate is rather loose. Loose. <laughs> it could be assassin, it could be serial killer, it could be executioner, it could be this guy got killed another in a really brutal way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, something interesting about his design is that not I think his, like, or I don't know if you could see here, but his eyebrows are also red, and I've never met a person with red eyebrows. I guess it just means he's constantly, like, scowling and, like... <laughs> He, he doesn't put up with a lot of shenanigans. You know, if anything, like... Like, he's uh, a serious... Like, uh, Lee Shuin is a serious character. And that's what the, is... And that design kind of gives it off. But there are parts where it's, like, not really. Like, he's all like, Ha ha ha, I'm gonna fight someone strong. I'm excited. And you don't really get that impression from his design at all. Hmm. So his design l makes him look like he's stoic. Yeah. But he's secretly, like, really excited. Yeah, I think it actually is meant to fool you, because the first time you see him, he doesn't really say anything. He's just killing dudes coldly. So, yeah, maybe it's meant to be a surprise. Um, anyway, want to look at our next design? Sure. Sure.